are y'all it's me aloha hey guys and welcome back to a new video and in this video i am finally doing a review of the new nickelodeon show the astronauts and compared to the other shows i reviewed <coughs> This one is actually pretty okay. So, without further ado, let's get into the review. So, The Astronauts was first teased at the 2020 Kids' Choice Awards that was hosted by Victoria Justice. So, as they were presenting the awards, they played like a sneak peek of the show. And I was thinking, okay, this show seems pretty interesting. And it came around the same time that Side Hustle did. It just came around the week of Thanksgiving last fall. Because they did announce that it was coming out last fall. So I recorded like the first five-ish episodes and then I finally watched the show last week and hear my thoughts on it. So let's get into the synopsis on the show. Let me, let me read off the synopsis of the show overall. Let's see. So the synopsis of the show reads, An unexpected development prompts doubts among the kids about returning home and an unknown threat attempts to destroy the Odyssey before the astronauts can make their next move. So the show starts off with our five main characters. Sammy, who is an who is a eighth grader, but she's eleven. She skipped two grades and she has two moms. Sammy is, I'd say, pretty much the leader of the group. Like, she's very smart. She's a very resourceful. And then she cares about other people. She is just putting any decision that will help her friends first before, you know, anything actually about herself. So, yeah, she's really selfless. And then she really cares about her friends. She doesn't like to see their friends talk crap about themselves. Then there is Will. Will is the daughter of a reporter. And like, he's a pretty sweet kid. Even though his mom is out there for a story. He's just there to, you know, make friends. Get his little pick and leave. He did not sign up for any of this astronaut nonsense at all. Then there is the two siblings, Martin and Doria. So Martin is pretty much the oldest of the two. He's always there to look out for Doria, his little sister, because that's basically the role that his dad put on him and he will do anything to make sure that you know his sister is safe and that they're not putting themselves in a dangerous situation he's pretty much the peacemaker of the group like whenever the boys have trouble martin is always there to find common ground he's like hey you were wrong but just because I'm saying this person is wrong, doesn't mean the other person is wrong as well. He's pretty much like, oh, I knew I didn't want to go through this. I told y'all this was a bad idea, da, 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 which is freaking hilarious. And then at the other time, he's like, well, I'm here. So might as well contribute something and make peace where peace is due. And then my favorite character, Doria. She is a sweet, lovable girl. She kind of reminds me of Raven from That's a Raven, of course, because she is a fashionista. Any type of fashion opportunity that she sees, 
she's gonna take it and then she's also very caring like she cares about her friends and she'll do anything to help her friends so now let's get into the character i have a love hate relationship with elliot the name says it all elliot and if people say monica how can you laugh at that because damn it it's funny like elliot was the main reason i guess you could thank him for why the show's starting because if it wasn't for him you know the kids will still be home they wouldn't be stranded off in space but no he was the main one pressuring everybody to go on that ship and what happened boom they were locked in there so then he tries to use the other kids' suspicions against them to have to have them turn against Will. Like, honey, you do realize if it wasn't for your foolery, they wouldn't be in this predicament in the first place. Are you dumb? Like, you want to blame every single person, but not hold yourself accountable. Then, all of a sudden, you know, he wants to play the, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Classic son of rich man's kid, which I will get into when it comes to the episode review. So, yeah, that's basically the breakdown of the characters. And let's get into, basically the episode's breakdown. So the show starts off with the five kids. They are just hanging off at, at the Helios, which is a company that is designing a spacecraft called, with artificial intelligence called Matilda that is set to make their launch in about 200 days. So the kids are pretty psyched about it, but they're pretty much psyched about it on the ground. Now, Elliot was the main one pressuring Sammy to, you know, get on the aircraft because her parents, her two moms, have access to it. They're like, well, your moms are these important people. Shouldn't you have access? And then Sammy was pretty much like, well, I don't know. And she gave in to the peer pressure. <sighs> so, like, the kids were just have wanting to have, like, a nice selfie and get down from the spacecraft. But that activates the artificial intelligence Matilda that knows their names, like, their favorite interests their parents, and why she specifically shows them to become the astronauts and make this mission. So while the adults are trying to get the kids out, you have Sammy thinking quick on her feet, you know, trying to get the rest of the kids out of the spacecraft. And here comes Elliot running his mouth. Oh, we should just listen to the adults. Da, 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 da. I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> you are the main reason why they're in this predicament. Just shut up. And that's what I like. Whenever, you know, Sammy was trying to do her thing, Martin always put Elliot in his place as he freaking shut. <laughs> but even after all their efforts to try and stop the ship from launching, unfortunately, it does take off and the kids are left without their parents. So, this leaves the parents to their last resort, and particularly Elliot's dad. 
So he goes to his brother that is nicknamed Singer and they don't really have the best relationship, but he's like, He's like, even though we're not on good terms, Elliot is missing. He's up in the sky and I need your help. So Singer is pretty much like, I'll do it. But we have to play by my rules. And that plays a big part in the future episodes. So that is the main premise of the first two episodes because the show technically had an hour premiere but you know how it is when it comes to hour premiere they split it into two parts so after this happens like I mentioned before Elliot is the son of a rich man and Will's mother is a journalist so as the kids have their own room on the Odyssey where they can talk to their parents. As Elliot's dad is talking to him, he's basically like, don't trust Will. His mom is going to find any way to ruin me. And you know that's bad for business, so watch him like a hawk. And don't trust anything he says. So Elliot takes that to heart, while on the other hand, Will's mom is telling Will, like, oh, I don't trust, like, I don't trust Elliot. His dad probably fed him with some nonsense and actually shot because rich people are evil. But, anyway, <laughs> but anyways, so she's telling Will, watch Elliot like a hawk, don't trust Elliot. But Will, unlike Elliot, does not do what his mother says and would rather judge the kids off of his own experience rather than what lies his mom fed into his brain. So, in the meantime, Doria was sad that she wasn't going to spend her birthday with her dad and... Elliot comes over and he was and he noticed that Doria wanted this bracelet. So he prints out this 3D version of the bracelet that she wanted to win Doria's heart or like win or to like manipulate her, I guess. So then he uses that to be like, I think Will's sus. Don't you think Will's acting this way? And then Doria's like, yeah, I think he's been acting pretty shady. So he's using Doria's bracelet thing to manipulate her to go against Will. So then Martin catches on to this and he tells Will about it. And that ultimately leads up to a fight between Will and Elliot. So while Elliot is still acting pissed off with Will, Will is like, even though my mom told me to watch you, I trust you. Like, I would never do that to my friend, which is what Will saw them as, not as some kind of competition or threat because we're in this together. If we don't work together, things are ultimately going to get screwed up. So in the meantime, Matilda starts to become really close with Sammy and then Sammy plays a game with Matilda to get the answers as to why Matilda chose them and how long they're gonna be there. And saying they just want to go home. They just want to be with their families. But Matilda's like, well, well, you're stuck with me. You're stuck with me, guys. <laughs> Nothing we can do. So everything is resolved around the end. And that was pretty much episode two. Pretty much action packed. 
Then episode three is where we get into the tomfoolery. Will and Elliot are playing a game across the toilets on the Odyssey and their dumb selves end up clogging a toilet with a octopus-like toy. So while everybody, while Martin, Doria, and Sammy are minding their own business, here you co here comes these two white boys doing their tomfoolery. Mm. Yeah, double homicide. Yeah. Unattractive, overweight, unworthy, untalented. <laughs> but since they get a hold of this, they're pretty much pissed because why, why are you doing this? We're in space. So now Elliot comes and he sets up a schedule since there's only like one working bathroom. And he's like, well, this is, has to be made by appointment. You only have 20 minutes to use this bathroom. The whole list of rules. And Doria's like, are you kidding me? All because y'all couldn't control yourselves. Y'all are doing this nonsense. Rightfully so. So, Sammy and the boys come up with a plan to split up and try and find the toy. And try and find the toy so that they can unclog the toilet. And then mind you... They are still in contact with the adults on the Matilda in the Helios space. So they start to get a little suspicious. They're like, Sammy, what's going on? As they're trying to find the toy clogged in the pipes. And Sammy's basically like, well, we're playing a little game. That's what I like about Sammy. Like, she's very loyal. Like, she won't snitch. Unlike Elliot, probably. <clears throat> but that <laughs> that's another story. So as they are trying to locate the toy, Sammy, Sammy has a little moment with Doria where Doria's basically like, everyone else is doing all these fun things and they're always hoping to end these situations and I'm pretty much a liability. Like, what am I going to do? Like, I feel like I'm useless. So Sammy reassures her. She's like, you're not useless. So while Sammy's doing the do dirty work, she's like, Doria, you can help with the consoles. You can navigate where the toy is. So as they're playing a pretty much dog chase, a mouse chase across the spaceship, eventually... Doria tells Sammy that the toy is in her area and all of a sudden this thing multiplies because we find out that extreme hold essentially grows the toy. So now the toy has become um, this piece of plastic to this big disgusting creature. And so... Eventually, that takes over the spaceship and the kids are in trouble while the parents think that everything is just fine. But eventually, even though Doria feels like there's a way to get rid of the toy and not hurt it, they ultimately decide it's for the best and they knock that toy out of space as they should. And that was the end of episode three. So now the final episode I did watch was episode four. And that was around 33 days into their space journey. So the episode was basically about... Singer goes to talk to Sammy to find a way to get Matilda to turn the spaceship around and have them come home early. So she ultimately does something that screws everything up and that leads to 
her essentially giving Matilda a virus. So Matilda shuts down, everybody's panicking because these kids are basically floating in space with barely any contact to the people on the earth or the artificial intelligence Matilda. She's shut down, she's in sleep mode, she's in hibernate mode. So uh, everyone is freaking out. Essentially, the boys become closer and Elliot starts talking about, oh, life is a rich kid, da 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 Your parents don't have time for you. I feel like my dad puts work before me. And we'll essentially talk about this embarrassing moment that led to him being called another name rather than his actual name. And of course, like, Martin being the unproblematic king he is, of course, he can just make his little laugh and move on. So, eventually, Sammy is trying to figure out how to reactivate Matilda while Doria and the boys are just, you know, chilling and getting closer. And eventually... And eventually, after all the strategies that Sammy tries, it nothing just nothing doesn't work. So she's there beating herself up, even though Singer's the one that manipulated her to put a virus in Matilda. But eventually, Matilda does wake up, and that leads to a threat near the outside of the odyssey and that's how the episode ended like it ended on a pretty interesting note this may be a show i actually finished i really enjoyed the show like the show had great acting i feel like the plot was very interesting and you could really see the character's emotions when somebody was scared. You could see they're scared. When somebody's angry, you could see that they were angry. Same thing with happy and you're happy, you know, hilarious. All the whole roller coaster. And then also another good thing was there was no laugh track. Like, it was just left up to the actors' talents to be funny, and that's what they did. Unlike the other shows putting a laugh track in, and then you're still staring at the screen, scratching your head, because you're trying to at least give them sympathy for that joke landing out flat. She tried. At least, you know, she... When? That's not our fault because there's no comedic timing in these other shows. And overall, like, the writing is just better. But I don't like how Nickelodeon gave an extra order to the other shows I reviewed, such as Side Hustle and Danger Force. They gave them a full season, but y'all give the astronauts 10 episodes? Why? And I feel like the characters are pretty likable. Of course, there's set up conflict. And yeah, overall, the show's pretty great. I hope it does get picked up for a season two. And there you go, guys. That is my review on The Astronauts. And I feel like I may do... A Disney Channel show review, but it depends because you know, even though modern Nick and Disney are both trash, at least Disney is trying with Sydney to the max and Raven. So my Nickelodeon really isn't. I haven't really watched Nickelodeon as of recently because it took me a while to watch these episodes since Side Hustle disappointed me, but the astronauts sure didn't. So that's it for the video, guys. My last video is in the description and go follow me on my so social medias in the outro. Stay tuned for my next video. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.
On the voyage of a 